you know, concerning a disciple's uh, practical life, uh, especially in relation to um, our day-to-day -day life. One of the things we read um, in the book of Ephesians, maybe you can just turn with me, And chapter six, uh, chapter four, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that ye walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called. So the scripture makes one thing very clear that we are to walk worthy of this calling in Christ Jesus uh, in our day-to-day -day life. And as we flip the pages of Ephesians, we see immediately after that, the Apostle Paul is guided by the Spirit to bring in every aspect of a believer's life. He immediately after that speaks about uh, the fivefold ministry, the local church, how we ought to be corrected in our lives. And in chapter 4 he goes on to say how as individuals our personal walk every day, our speech, our uh, occupation, you know he touches almost everything in chapter 4. And then in chapter 5, he deals with uh, several other aspects of family life, husband and a wife relationship, um, you know, how they ought to be uh, loving and submitting to one another, you know, and as we turn on to chapter 6, he speaks about children obey your parents. And in uh, verse 4 he says, Fathers, provoke not your children. So, in other words, Paul says, This call of God will touch every aspect of our life. In other words, every relationship it touches. Beginning with the church, the ministries, brothers and sisters. So, when you get time, maybe you can read it. It will be very good in this light to read the book of Ephesians 4, 5 and 6. Okay, please do that. And you know that a good student always does the homework. You know, and if you don't want to do it, you see what exam you are going to write. And you know for yourself. We have been all hearing about exams in the morning. Today morning, last night, and um, yesterday morning and so uh, it's very important and then then he goes on to talk about servants you know uh, talking about our work in our offices you know it's not that the Bible doesn't speak about how we ought to be in our offices if you are students how we ought to be in your place of study you know if you're working that, that means servants in that bracket we all come in that bracket you know how we ought to be uh, so I'm not getting into the details we read here very clearly that this calling it touches every aspect of our life and not only that it touches every relationship so it's a vast subject we will not be able to just handle it just one afternoon or two afternoons okay and then Paul goes further on and then he says uh, in verse 9, and ye masters. If there is anybody, you know, who's a boss here, who's got his own business, he's the boss. And the scripture doesn't spare him. He says, masters, do the same thing unto them, forbearing uh, threatenings, knowing that your master also is in heaven. So, the scripture doesn't spare anyone. And the word of God says very clearly that this call of God touches every aspect of our life. 
So to be a true disciple and grow on into that purpose of our salvation, we ought to be uh, a careful people. God's word has it all to instruct us. And he doesn't leave us uh, in darkness. He doesn't leave us to presumptions. I wish to say this uh, to you. Uh, many years ago when I was in the service working in the Air Force, um, you know, um, I was then in Chennai and Chennai was a dry area. Means no, uh, you know, um, drinks are allowed. And, um, but, uh, you know, and, uh, you know, so, so many people from the civil, they come around you to be, make friendship. Sometimes they're very high officers and, and highly placed people because they want to have this devil in liquid form. They keep coming to you and to keep friendship with you. And um, so, uh, you know, by God's grace, the Lord had never allowed me to get into this habit. And even before I was uh, an unbeliever, I never touched this. And uh, much more after I became a believer, I knew that uh, I need to keep away from all this. But sometimes my friends used to come and say, All right, you are not doing it. Why not? We have it in your name. <laughs> Means you're caught up, we will take it. And I said, Yeah, that's okay. I mean, but I knew that was wrong. And I said, No. But then one day when I was reading the scripture in Habakkuk chapter 2 and verse 15, it's clearly written and my eyes bulged out when I read that. It says, Woe unto him that giveth his neighbor a drink. <laughs> but I never knew that there was a scripture like that. I was a young believer. And my eyes, uh, my eyes bulged out when I read so clearly. It says, Woe to him who giveth his friend or his neighbor a drink. So what I'm trying to say is that you have not seen all the pages yet. Neither have I. <laughs> but if we have an open heart, the word of God really tells us where our limitations are. Where the parameters are for the child of God in one's life. Now having said that, um, you know, that... Uh, that this call touches every aspect of our life, every relationship. Uh, I just want to share a few things today, this evening. And uh, uh, first of all, uh, I wish to say that uh, as disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ, we are to uh, be uh, a people who are humble and honor. Uh, our father and mother. You know, we are living in a time of terrible rebellion on this planet Earth. Rebellion is seen almost everywhere. You know, and the scripture very clearly tells us we are to honor our father and our mother or our parents. In Exodus chapter 20 and verse 12, you know, it says, Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. So the scripture doesn't say whether, you know, whether our parents are believers or unbelievers. The scripture is very clear that we are to honor them. Now to what measure we are to honor them? What are the limitations? You know, in honoring them, these things the Holy Spirit will help us to know and understand in our situations but this is God's word and we as his disciples 
must humble ourselves. That is the real mark of a true disciple, humility. Humility is the precious mark of a disciple. We are humble enough to honor others and especially it begins with our own parents. We also read in Leviticus chapter 19 and verse 3, He shall fear every man his mother and his father and keep my Sabbaths. I am the Lord your God. Again we have um, a scripture in Deuteronomy uh, chapter 27 and verse 16. It says, Cursed be he that setteth light by his father and his mother, and all the people shall say, Amen. There are several scriptures. We can turn to Proverbs. I will read all of them. My son, hear the instruction of thy father and forsake not the law of thy mother. You know, there are several scriptures. And there's another scripture in Proverbs again. As I said, I won't touch all the verses, but just a few. Whoso curseth his father and his mother, his lamb shall be put out in obscure darkness. Chapter 20. I didn't tell the chapter, chapter 1. Chapter 1 and uh, verse uh, 8. And this is Proverbs chapter 20 and verse 20. And Proverbs chapter 30. 3 0. And the verse 17. The eye that mocketh at his father and despiseth to obey his mother, the ravens of the valley shall pick it out, and the young eagles shall eat it. It's a strong word. So the scripture is very clear that we, we are to honor our parents as the disciples of the Lord. And what did the Lord say? Turn with me to Matthew 15. Matthew chapter 15 and verse 4. For God commanded, saying, Honor thy father and mother. And he that curseth father or mother, let him die the death. So in all these portions we see very clearly how we as his disciples, we are to honor our father and our mother. We have to be humble enough and we are to uh, obey the Lord. And his word. And then the Apostle Paul, he makes it very clear by the Holy Spirit, and that gives us a further um, understanding about this. And it draws the parameters and the limitations of it. He says, Honor thy, thy father and mother, which is the first commandment and with promise that it may be well with thee, that thou mayest live long on the earth. So, now the question is that what measure 
We need to honor them. You know, for a child of God, when he comes to salvation, when a person comes to Jesus Christ and uh, he becomes a disciple of the Lord, the highest priority in his life is Christ himself. So, our honoring our parents cannot go above Christ. That is the way we need to strike the balance in any relationship for that matter. Any relationship. The first priority is Christ. The first, the highest honor is for Christ. And that is how we have to maintain our honor towards our parents. So, uh, you know, the Holy Spirit, who is our teacher and helper, and as we know that He is the Spirit of Truth, He will come to us and help us in this aspect, and we cannot lay down any laws about it. In other words, it is the Spirit of Law in Christ Jesus. You know, the spirit of uh, the law of life in Christ Jesus, wherein the Holy Spirit will help us to know. And that's all I can say about it. Because as our faces are different, so are our situations. So are our family situations. So are our parents one from the other. One's parents would be one way, the other family parents will be the other way. But the best way to put things in the right order is come to the right priority, Christ first, and every other relationship after that. So we are not to prefer, you know, we are not to prefer uh, our parents above Christ. The highest priority and honor goes to the Lord Himself. You know, so um, that's that's very important for us. And as I said, let there be um, no mistake. Let there be no jumbling up there. The Holy Spirit will help us to draw clear lines when we are open to the Spirit of God. And if there are specific situations, seek for a help and counsel of those who can really guide us through those situations when it comes to this matter. Uh, that's one thing, first of all, I want to share with us. Secondly, um, there's one more scripture I can say, the Lord said, uh, if you hate not your father and your mother, that just turn with us to Luke. Uh, we can just see that in conjunction with this, the book of Luke chapter 14. And verse 26. If any man come to me and hate not his father and mother and wife and children and brethren and sisters, yea, his own life. You know, and the scripture is so very clear that what the Lord's saying here is about um, that fleshly relationship is something that is to be cut or to be set aside and we need to come into a Christly relationship with our parents. In other words, Christ comes the first priority in our lives. Now it's almost the same translation here. 
Okay, so we see that the Lord Himself said it's not talking about that we are not to honor our parents, we are not to love them, that's not what the scripture says, but that fleshly relationship wherein our parents would tell us and uh, want us to do things out of their fleshly relationship and deny us the way of the Lord or do not want us to walk the way of the Lord, then we need to uh, hate them or that fleshly relationship has to be set aside and pray for the Lord. And I'm sure the Holy Spirit will help us in our lives and we see how the Lord Himself demonstrated that when His own mother and brothers and sisters came to meet Him, He said, who is my mother? Who is my brothers and sisters? They who do the will of the Father, they are the ones. But that doesn't mean that he did not regard his mother, honor. Right on the cross at those points and moments of death, he said to John, your mother, behold your mother. He was so concerned about her even in those moments. So I'm sure that the Holy Spirit would really help us who is our teacher, who will guide us and teach us all the truth concerning our limitations and uh, where we need to have the restraints, where we need to, uh, uh, you know, seek for our help in our lives. And as I said, where there is a need for you, always seek the help and uh, others will be able to help you who are mature in the Lord and walking this way. Secondly, uh, having shared about humility and honoring our...